Well, that episode was weird, I think. Yeah, weird's a good way to put that. Like, so much happened, again, and I don't know how to make sense of it all. But I'm going to try and talk about what stood out, what I liked, what I didn't like. I don't think there's much I didn't like here. So yeah, let's get into it. So, we picked up where the last episode left off, with Subaru and Beatrice, and it felt like we were finally going to get some answers about Beatrice. Except, because this is ReZero, we got even more questions. Like, Subaru was talking about how everything from Beatrice, like, comes from the book. And it makes me wonder, does she know the book and is able to know the other timelines or something like that? But then Subaru yanks the book from her because she can't answer on her own and sees it's blank. In fact, some time ago, the book stopped showing the future. And it was many years ago. I think it was the 400. But it was said that one day that person would appear in the library. But then they never came, and the book did not tell her who it was. And we found out that she wants someone to bring an end to it, and the contract, and her life. So yeah, she wants to die. And this is very fascinating, especially when you contrast Subaru and Beatrice here. Subaru has died many times throughout this anime. And so he, like, knows the value of death. He knows the pain of losing people that he can't do anything about. And then for Beatrice to just say that she wants to die, it just, it, Subaru does not like that. He even says, like, don't say that to me. And it's very fascinating. And we learned also that the reason nothing was written be was because that is where the owner's future ends, which makes me wonder, is the owner Ekidona? Is that the thing that happened 400 years ago, that uh, Satalia ate all the other witches, thereby killing them? And we also learned that Beatrice is, was contracted to Echidona, which makes sense because Echidona is all about knowledge. Library is where you hold knowledge, so it again, it makes sense. But it's also interesting since now we learn that a spear can be contracted with a witch. And the contract still endures even after the witch has died. So that makes you wonder. Are there any other spirits that have been contracted to the witches? Yeah, I don't can't think of any others that could. Maybe Puck? Because, I mean, Puck left Amelia. Can a spirit only have one contract at a time? I would think the answer is yes, but no, no, that's not true. Because, remember back in Season 1, Beatrice had a contract with Subaru. I don't think he really knew what that meant, but if I remember right, it was still a contract. So that means a spear can be contracted to two people at once. So does that mean Puck has another master that he has to go help out now? Makes me wonder. Definitely makes me wonder. But yeah, back to Beatrice, though. And she basically begs Subaru to help, to kill her. And she just wants to be pulled out of this darkness. And it's interesting that she both wants Super to kill her or to, like, choose her as his first. So is that she's in love with Subaru, but she knows that he will not choose her because of Amelia? And why would a spirit have such feelings for Subaru? Is it just because he's a person who actually cares about her? Is there something more to that? I don't know. It's very weird how Subaru has all these characters attracted to him. Like Satalia, and maybe Echidona, and Beatrice. Like the whole Amelia and Rem, those at least kind of make sense. But all these others? There is something more to Subaru. Something that I don't think even he knows. But yeah, that's interesting. And we also learned that a spear cannot die on their own. They have to be killed by someone. And the reason it has to be him, she's about to reveal, but then Elsa shows up and asks if she could be the person to kill Beatrice because Elsa has such a kind heart. Or she just likes killing people. I think it's the latter because she wanted to know, like, is it possible to kill a spirit? <laughs> Elsa is a great villain. But yeah, we learned that there is another character who is helping Elsa, whose name is Melai. And then once uh, Subaru and Beatrice escape the mansion, we learned that Mei Lai was in fact one of the kids in the village. Which, yeah, that kind of sucks and means that there's even more things that Subaru has to figure out how to defeat. <laughs> like, in addition to Elsa, he also has to save the villagers from Mei Lai. And the question is, who was Mei Lai after? Because she and Elsa are working together, they split up to go after the targets. So is the targets Federica and Pretra? 
did seem like it is a Tar Hat Ram. But again, why would it be Ram? Like, Ram is a person that no one remembers. Is it someone else in the village? Is it the village as a whole? And who are they working for? So many mysteries here. But yeah, we got a cool fight with Beatrice and Elsa, where Beatrice seemed to win pretty easily. But it turns out Elsa was not dead, and in fact stabbed Beatrice in the back. Which makes me wonder if there's a connection there between Elsa and Roswell, because they both stab people in the back to kill them. But yeah, and then Beatrice was happy to die. She died as a spirit, work like dissolving and all that. And Elsa enjoyed getting to, spe- to steal a... Or Elsa liked getting to kill a spirit. But then, well, yeah, then Elsa steps over in his eye. But I'm not going to talk about that because, well, then it got weird. And then Beatrice did something to Subaru, like used some sort of magic that hit him in his gut. And it seemed like it teleported him back to the sanctuary. But why would she do that? Did she want to send him back there? Is that her way of trying to protect him? Or is that her way of making sure he got more information in this life? And then the episode got weird. Okay, it was kind of weird so far, but it got completely weird. And yeah, it's like he woke up here. I think I heard the whole return by death uh, sound effect. So he didn't die, though. Which makes me wonder, is that maybe not the return by death sound effect? Is it instead the touch of the witch? Now, you might seem this... Now, this might seem strange because, after all, Beatrice is not a witch but a spirit. But she is contracted with a witch. So does that mean Beatrice has some of Echidona's power? And that teleportation thing to bring Subaru to Echidona's sanctuary? Was that part of Echidona's power that Beatrice had? Maybe not. Maybe I'm just completely off going on a tangent. That is possible. But it makes me wonder. So yeah, we have Subaru going back to the tomb to see Amelia. And I do not trust Amelia here. Like, just her smile. You did not trust a person with that type of smile. But then she says she's lonely and then scolds Subaru for leaving her behind. And she doesn't know about that letter. It's implied that maybe Roswell did something, but then later on Roswell said that he didn't, so I don't know. But it shows how Amelia is basically super reliant on Subaru. This goes back to what Roswell reveals later on, that everything he is doing is to try to force Amelia to be alone to force her and Subaru together. But then Amelia even proclaims her love for Subaru. And it's interesting how Subaru reacts. Like, he's defeated by this. He runs away. He knows this is not right. Now, this is interesting, I think. Yeah, it is interesting. But it shows how Subaru does not feel like he is worthy of being loved by Amelia. It was an episode or two ago where where Subaru felt like he was second place compared to Puck. And so now he feels like the only reason Amelia is saying that is because she doesn't have Puck. So this just, like, feels bad for Subaru. Like, he cannot have the person he loves love him back. At least he doesn't feel that would be right. But, yeah. It's like... I think he even says it. Someone pushed her to the point that she had no choice but to rely on him. But this isn't all that is going on. We also have snow. And not Amelia causing it. And so Subaru suspects Roswell. Because anytime something suspicious is going on, you blame Roswell. So Subaru decides the last thing he will do in this life, this world, is to get an answer from Roswell. And so Subaru goes there, asks Roswell if he knows anything about the snow and then Roswell responds asking Subaru if he heard about the snow from him. You remember a couple episodes ago it was very much hinted that Roswell knew about Subaru's power and it was implied that it was from his true gospel. Something that I did not realize or did not remember at first when watching the scene is that Subaru does not know that Roswell knows. It was only shown to us the viewer. So that was, like, very interesting seeing this dynamic unfold, where Roswell knew something that we also knew that Subaru didn't. And then Roswell just decides to kill Garfield through Ram, and basically saying, oh, you're a great servant, I dedicate this soul to you. Though we also don't know who you is referring to there. Maybe the Japanese makes it more clear. 
But he also notes Super's reaction, that she's shocked, but isn't grieving. Because he knows that this can and likely will be undone. And then Super makes another comment about over and over, and Roswell basically confirms, like, yep, you can return by death. He doesn't exactly say that. And I wrote Garfield's name is Sarah Roswell. That is not the correct character. It's hard when I take notes while watching because so much is going on. So Roswell reveals that he cannot fulfill his greatest wish. Feeling bad that he cannot, the Beatrice was able to by dying. Though Roswell cannot explain his true wish because, well, of course that ruined the suspense, but also because he made a vow. To who? Echidona, perhaps? That's going to be my guess. Everything is Echidona's fault. But we learn that Roswell is doing everything he can to fulfill his true wish, whatever that is. And again, this is where we learn that Roswell is doing all this to isolate Amelia so that she would lean on Subaru because that will somehow lead to Roswell's wish coming true. So why would that cause his wish to come true? Well, let's think about that. Amelia is one of the royal selection candidates to become the ruler of the country. If Amelia succeeds, Roswell will basically be the one who put her there, and so he will have a lot of power. And so the question is, so how does Subaru and Amelia tie into this? Well, I think the answer comes in the faith that Roswell has in Subaru. That if Amelia and Subaru are together, they together will be able to overcome anything because Subaru can keep rewinding his deaths. So what Roswell is trying to do here is force Amelia and Subaru together so that Amelia will have Subaru support, and because if she has that, then she will become queen. At least that's my theory. But I also wonder if Roswell needs to go to such an extreme because, like, Amelia and Subaru already pretty much love each other. So the question is, how much does Roswell know about how Amelia feels? Because maybe he doesn't know this yet. But still, I feel like there's enough there that he wouldn't need to go to this extreme. But yes, he says that killing Subaru would put the cart before the uh, ground dragon, so instead he just beats Subaru up. And I love how this expression is like changed for the anime because they have ground dragons and not horses. Maybe they have horses too, but I don't know if we've seen the... But I mean, if you have a ground dragon, you really don't need horses, so it makes sense. A uh, nice touch that they had here. But then there are many other questions too, like how was Roswell able to stab through two people with nothing but his arm? Does he have some sort of power too? I mean, obviously he's a powerful mage. But my question is, is he also a spirit? I think the answer is no, because if he was a spirit, we would see him basically reacting as a spirit would when he was being eaten by the great rabbit, which reminds me, the great rabbit showed up again, but this time earlier, and we don't know why. Is it a connection with the snow? Whoever's snowing is like a big source of mana. And we also saw that the rabbit was initially only attracted to Roswell, not Subaru. Though Subaru also went through a ton of pain on his way to get to Amelia. It's also interesting how okay Roswell was with dying. Because he knew Subaru would die pretty soon too. And then time would be reset and Roswell would be fine then. And then Roswell also made the comment that... He will sacrifice himself too and tell Subaru to get rid of everything but the one most important thing. And that would make him like Roswell. Very interesting when we see Subaru's blind dedication to Amelia or whatever he's after in that moment. How he basically is willing to push everything else to the side. And I think this is a caution for Subaru here. The danger of being so extremely focused on only one thing. Very interesting seeing the parallels between Roswell and Subaru. But yes, yeah, Subaru goes back to Amelia, and she's even more in, unhinged, maybe? Overly loving? I don't know. She reminds me of, you know, from Future Diary, partly because I've been seeing that recently, but like super affectionate, but also scary. Like we see the purple in her eyes, and I'm wondering if that's Satalia starting to take over. I don't think she's been completely taken over yet, because if she had, then she'd just be talking all about her love for Subaru and not able to talk, really. So I think it's still Amelia, but maybe a mix of Amelia and Satalia. And if Amelia went through the trials, as it's implied that she was doing this to bring Subaru back, then maybe that really messed with her. Maybe that is forcing her to be this type of person that basically is there for Subaru and Subaru only. 
So what were her trials? Is there something with Echidona here? Because Echidona is behind everything. I think. I could be wrong. But yeah. We also get Subaru looking terrible. Like, he's been beat up a ton, probably eaten a lot by the rabbits, nearly dying. And then Amelia and him kiss. And we get the title card. The Taste of Death. Like, what? Is that referring to Amelia kissing Subaru? And I love how this twists the idea of love even more. Like, we got that with Satalia saying that she loves Subaru. Was that last episode or was that the episode before? This show is so filled with story. I don't even remember when things are happening. It's kind of crazy, isn't it? But yeah, we have Amelia, like, messed up somehow. And Subaru beaten within an inch of his life. And then we also have Frederica and Petra and, well, no, Ram was there. Oh, we have Ram and Garfield both killed, too. So there is no way that Subaru is not going to die soon. Unless he doesn't. Wouldn't that be the great, terrible twist that he doesn't die? That the time moves forward with all these characters dead around him? Though I don't think that's true. For reasons I that might get into spoilers beyond this point, though it's just mainly speculation, but still. Super is going to die soon, but what can he do? Like, he needs to stop the rabbit from killing the other one. He needs to help Amelia get through the trial. He needs to, I don't know, stop Roswell? Maybe? Well, for one, he needs to stop the great rabbit. He also needs to stop Elsa and My Lee. I think that's, yeah, My Lie. And, yeah, how's Super going to do this? I have no idea. I'm looking forward to finding out, though, and I'm going to stop this video because I've been talking for like 17 minutes. So yeah, good episode. I'm confused, but definitely a good episode, and I'll be back next week to be confused again. So thank you for watching this episode. Thank you for subscribing if you do. I really do appreciate that, and I'll be back later to be confused by more ReZero. Thank you for watching.